I'm CK. Tonight we've got a mini Tesla coil music thing in this little bag from the Ding Dong store. Uh, it's described as this Tesla on the basis of the general increase in the music player you can play phone, computer music, clear sound. Note, burn or scrape off the pan on both ends of the Tesla wire then soldering it otherwise it's hard to work. So it takes a good input well, I'll go into that when we actually look through the parts in the kit. We'll see how it works and see what it actually does. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the bag. And again, let me read off some of the stats. Uh, 1524 volt DC input. When 24 volt, a 5 to 10 millimeter arc is ideal. Small size power and energy range can be long interrupted work. You can also, taking lit LED, foam, energy saving lights, flash frequency tube, you can play wireless play, power transmission, rotating arc, and the like. Uh, in other words, uh, the coil is powerful enough to theoretically uh, light up a uh, small tube, a fluorescent tube, or whatever. We'll see. And there we are. Shows all the parts. Looks like good pictures for how everything goes together. And then putting it all together. Looks like a relatively straightforward assembly job. And we'll see if it can actually produce a nice arc. Having a little Tesla coil is always good so you can mess up everybody in your neighborhoods radio reception. Fortunately, everybody's got cable now, so that doesn't really matter. And this is the same thing without as many pictures. No, that's fine. As long as they've got a good build guide, we're good. Here is the coil. It's wrapped in plastic. And the wires are inside. We'll take them out and scrape off the lacquer insulation when the time comes. Here's the board. Gosh, very simple board. So the secondary coil is 350 turns. Uh, you can, I mean, I'm sure you can look up how a Tesla coil uh, is arranged. And then uh, two LEDs, a blue and a red. And here's the primary coil, and, or they call it elementary coil, and that's just one turn. Uh, and you can do the math on how much that comes out to, because I'm not gonna, because I'm really bad at math. Here are where the two switching transistors are gonna go. Couple of resistors, DC power in, and audio in. And then it's got a fan, or at least it's got fan connectors, and one one microfarad cap. Huh. And that's an audio cable. I think uh, what they're suggesting is the arc will vary based on the audio input. Nice that they gave me a cable too. I can always use those. Some foam. Heat sink. Heat sink. These are okay, even though the you can see they didn't clean off the shavings from the when they tapped the holes in here. I'll just tap them against my workbench. And they're fine. LEDs. I assume this is the blue one. Let's take a look. We'll turn the meter on to continuity testing mode, which puts a little current through the leads. This should be blue when I get it all positioned right. Yep, that's blue. Spacer. Let 
got a BD 20, uh, 243 uh, and an NF70 transistor to power this thing and switch switch between things. Again, not many parts. And one disc cap, what is this? This is a 105, so that's pretty small. And this is the one microfarad, 50 volt. One pin header, I think that's for the fan connection. I probably won't put that on. The fan connection that uh, goes right here. I'm not. If you need to cool this more, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. So that's it. Oh, here's the wire to make one turn around the primary. I mean, around the secondary. So that's it. Let's get the soldering iron heated up and get this thing assembled. Before I do anything else, I'm going to take the lacquer off the coil wires so I don't forget. God, they're so... I'm sorry, i got to go to the end of the bench because I don't have any room on that side. But the lacquer's coming off. Okay, so that's the easy part. I mean, it's all the easy part, quite frankly. Okay, we're going to do the resistor first. And we're going to do two 10K resistors, R1 and R4, and that's 10K. One microfarad at C1. Now we're going to do the two transistors. Let me make sure I've got the correct screws for these. Well, all the screws are the same size, so it doesn't matter. And before I do this, I'm going to grab some heat sink, I mean, heat transfer paste on here, thermal paste on here. Now typically, I don't screw the heat sink tightly until after I've mounted, I've soldered the transistor on the board. And let's make sure this is the NF70, so we'll do that first. Put a little thermal paste on the back to get even better heat transfer. And be careful with that, not because it's dangerous, but because it is messy as heck. You get some thermal paste loose and it'll get all over everything. Of course, it doesn't help when you move the transistor around when you try and put the screw through. Come on, guys. Play fair. So I'll just do that a little bit. Not very tight, just a little tight. And we'll push it through. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the power connector on. And the audio jack in case this, on the off chance that this does work, I'll go ahead and plug something into it to watch the spark dance to the music. Now we'll 
we'll put the little feet on it. Okay, there's everything but the coil and minus the little pin header to connect the fan. Now I'm going to cut the Cut the foam. I do really have to get some better scissors. I bought these Scotch brand titaniums thinking they'd be real good. They're not. So if anybody has any suggestions for good shop scissors, please leave a comment. Because these are not bad, but they're not great. Now before I put that, actually I'll put the foam down first, never mind. And I'll get red ink all over my fingers, because that's what I do. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the primary coil on. Straighten this out. So I'm going to push this kind of in there right now. And we're going to make one turn around. I'm not affixing this to anything yet. Just going to make one turn around to get a sense for how much wire that is. And they say, uh, just for guidance, uh, best distance is one and a half millimeters. So we don't want to go too far beyond that. And I'll, I'll do some adjusting, uh, obviously. Once I get this all soldered in, I just wanted to get an idea. And I think that's long enough. I'm going to be... I think this will be just fine. I'm going to do a little quick eyeball measurement. Yeah, I'm going to have plenty. Just going to take a little bit of fiddling to get it right. So I've got the wire that I'm going to have. Uh, actually, that's the wire I want. Which one do I want arcing? I think I can do this one, I can do the short one into the hole. I'm going to take the short one, I'm going to get some tweezers to do this. Because I've got to get this little hair thin wire through this hole. Okay, it's there. Now I'm going to get some very thin solder. I'm going to solder it from this side of the board. Again, since the holes are all through hole plated, I don't worry about cold solder joints. I think that's good. 
Seems to be good. And yeah, I didn't uh, peel the sticky tape off yet. That's because I want to do one more thing before I... I'm going to check for continuity through the coil to make sure from the solder point. From the solder point to here. Yep, got continuity. So now I'm going to use my tweezers again to remove the backing ta a paper from the foam pad. Now I'm going to put, try and center this as much as I, as I can with my spastic sense. Okay, so the coil is in place. Now I'm going to use my little pointy thing to adjust the wire, make sure it's not touching the coil at all and make sure it's about a millimeter and a half all the way around, which may be which may be hard to achieve, but maybe not. That's a little close there. It's touching down there. Okay, so that looks like it might be ready to go. Let me go grab a power supply. Okay, let's see if anything happens. I've, uh, I'm going center positive on this. I don't know if that's going to be correct. Let me drive this up to my DC power supply up to 24 volts because they say uh, power input DC 15 to 24. So I'm going to take it down to uh, 20 to start and then the amperage limit it's supposed to go 2 amps, so I'll set my power supply to a max of 3 amps. And again, I've got it on center positive, and I don't know if that'll be right. So let's fire it up, see if anything blows up. Well, the LED certainly didn't blow up. I'm not seeing an arc, but let's get the neon tube. Oh, look at that. The neon tube, it is glowing. So the Tesla coil is... Can you see this? The Tesla coil is successfully broadcasting power. Now again, I'm not getting anything on the arc. Maybe it's because I don't have enough insulation off of it, uh, or maybe I don't have enough power. More power! I'm going to take it up to 24 volts. I turned it off, and now I'll turn, set it, reset it to 24 volts. And now, here we go. It's 24 volts input. Still not getting any arcing. I am getting power transmission. Again, that's the whole, that's the dream, broadcast power. They also say don't worry about, uh, up there, I got a little bit, I'm striking an arc a little bit here. I don't know if you could see that. Let me see if I can do this without electrocuting myself. Even though, again, they mention at this voltage, you're not going to, it'll tingle but it's not going to hurt you. I'm going to power this down for a second, wait for the cap to discharge a little bit, and then I'm going to adjust. Okay, let's go again. Power it up. Put my little screwdriver near it. And draw an arc out. There it goes. There's a sustained arc. Only about a couple of millimeters long. Ah. 
problem is it's There we go, there's a good arc. I think I caught that. So Got a little arc going. I'm not going to do anything with the music side of this because it's not free arcing. I can't strike the arc and keep it going. Uh, actually, let me try that. Hold on a second. I will turn this off and back on. So we'll try it again with a little music. I think part of the problem is uh, I live in coastal California and it's very humid here. So it may not uh, be able to sustain an arc in the air with all this humidity. But you can see the arc strike a little bit. I can strike an arc and sustain it for a little bit until I get to far away. I'm getting little tiny spot welding marks on my... There we go. That's a nice arc. I'm going to take this up way up. I'm going to take it up to 30 volts because I'm like that. So it's pulling uh, 0.3 amps right now. There we go. There's a good there's a good arc. And now the tip is now the tip is glowing a little bit. That's good. Oh, it's it's the tip. Whoop. It grounded it. Did you see it touched itself on the other side? keeps touching over here. And the wire is melting away. Well, if 30 volts is good, maybe 32. Oh, quit your beeping. I know what I'm doing. can't get this thing to go any higher than 32 volts. So that's what we're at right now. And that makes, oh I see. I'm sorry I wasn't, because I couldn't see it. That's what makes that, no, nope, the blue LED is not going on. So it's working. It's a little touchy and it's not free arcing, but again I believe that may be because of the very high humidity right here on the coast. So, I'm going to turn off my power supply so it's not humming in the background anymore. So that worked. That was pretty neat. I am i mean, I think I'm going to get there like a bunch of these on Amazon and eBay. I think I'll get a couple more of these and uh, do like a Tesla off. But that was fun. So very simple to build. And it does what it says it does, so can't beat that. Thanks for watching.